Science is really the ability to predict the next most probable. That's what the real meaning of science is. Gaining the, the ability to predict the next most probable. When, when we talk about science, we're talking about a method of looking at a situation, a method of evaluation that differs from the opinionated system. If you ask me, I'll tell you. The scientific method has no special connection to truth. It really has a, a better way of looking at things than the earlier systems, which everything was attributed to gods or demons. This is where we get into the, applying the scientific method to society. Yes. Now, this is not in the book yet. The scientific method applied to society is something people don't think about much. But if you want to know where the answers may lie, it is in the application of the methods of science with human concern and environmental concern. The future by design refers to the application of the methods of science, not scientists, the methods of science to the social system. Naturally, even the methods of science undergo change, and as they change, so would the future. If we use the scientific method throughout the world, the probability of war drops to zero. The probability of human suffering disappears. Deprivation, poverty, crime, all those things tend to disappear because there's no basis for it. Jack spent a lot of time before studying people. He started studying how animals behave and how to change the behavior of animals or predict the behavior of animals. And it came to the conclusion that it's really the environment that changes behavior and enables us to behave the way we do. We're not born with prejudice and bigotry and, and anger and greed. It's really generated and nurtured by the environment that we live in. That's why we feel that unless you change your environment and change the experiences, we'll get the same aberrant behavior within people unless the environment is changed. Any culture in the world today tries to educate people so they'll serve a function in that particular culture. In other words, if you brought up in a Nazi culture, the flag waving and the swastika are the kind of things they put forth. If you brought up in a, in a primitive tribe, handling the javelin and the bow and arrow would be the kind of thing that you're exposed to. So people are conditioned to serve the interests of an established culture. Who does that to us? The owners of the institutions, the establishment. So they give us a value system that would support existing structures, whether it be religious, non-religious, industrial, military. When children say, you know, Daddy, what's the greatest country in the world? Of course our country is the greatest country in the world. Which God is the right God, Daddy? Our God. All the other gods are false gods. So picture this, a Roman family taking its kids to see the Christians being fed to the lions. And the kids are watching. Dad, can we come next week to see Christians being fed to the lions? Are these kids sick? No. Their value system is distorted. So I'm strictly concerned with the environment that people are reared in, raised in. And if that environment is altered, so will behavior be altered. You reorient the environment, that in turn reorients people. But if you re reorient people, Without touching the environment, it'll slip back. So when you try to think about the future, remember this. The process with which you think about things is based upon indoctrination, what you're given by your society. So your range of thought is limited by the dominant values of your society. So learning to be flexible in values takes a long time. And in talking to kids when I was very young, I had to be very patient with them if I were to make any progress. I talked about the concept of God, your concept of God, my concept of God, and his concept of God, so different. I wonder what God is really like, or if there is a God for that matter. And why would God permit war and disease if he's all loving? It didn't make sense to me. Too many clashes. So I questioned that. Of course, I felt a little uncomfortable during questioning 
the concept of God. But then reading about the history and evolution of gods, there were many different gods. The God of war, the God of peace, the God of love, which was more like the people that invented them. They behaved, they got angry, they made sacrifices, they created floods when they didn't like the way things were going. And this did not come through as superior intelligence. Primitive people, going back in time, when they saw lightning, they thought that the deity was angry. Why else would it, would it not occur? When a hurricane swept the land, they got rid of certain people in their tribe as a sacrifice, hoping that the gods would not produce a second hurricane. However, if it did, it did occur again, then they sacrificed some of the younger people. Rarely would the chief sacrifice himself, but he's always got a whole line of people ready to sacrifice. So you have that problem with human beings. Anything that occurs beyond their comprehension, they have to invent an excuse for. They have to create gods and demons to account for things because people come to the leadership of that community. No matter how primitive the tribe, they say, how come bad wind blow people off island? I said, you not behave good. You not make not enough contribution to volcano. Throw your brother-in-law into volcano. Maybe it doesn't erupt then. So if you throw your brother-in-law into the volcano and it still erupts, you have to throw your sister-in-law in. So you get metaphysics. You get religion, you get superstition, not wood, or you wear a rabbit's foot. Just remember that the rabbit had four of them, didn't do him any good. So on down the line, superstition prevails wherever ignorance prevails. Myth is a way of saying to the little guy working out there in the field, when he says, what is all this amount of? I never seem to be getting anywhere. When you kick the bucket, everything, it's there for you. If you don't get it in this life, you'll get it in the next, if you remain good. The amount of superstition that a culture can absorb would be directly proportionate to the amount of information people have. So in the future, with adequate supply of information, more than that which is given today, considerably more, you don't have, not wood. Today is my lucky day. When your number is up, it's up. All that will disappear in the future.